two, three weeks, you've heard me, well, the last few years, you've heard me talking a lot about it with medical doctors, nutritionists, scientists. Talk about how important real iodine is, nascent iodine, natural forms of it, whether it's from seaweed, Himalayan salts, you name it. And how the power structure knows this. And we've had a lot of questions from listeners. So that's why we've had a series this week uh, with several experts on pharmacist Ben Fuchs, uh, Dr. Uh, Ed Group, and others. But we've got Dr. David Brownstein, uh, who's a holistic family medicine, but he is a medical doctor. And he's got a whole bunch of different uh, degrees from the American College, the Advancement of Medicine, uh, but a bunch of awards. Uh, he also, of course, I'm going to go through where he attended. You can look him up on his website, drbrownstein.com. But the reason he's on with us is that he's really uh, the granddaddy uh, of, of really uh, popularizing the, the, what was known 100 years ago, that iodine is so key. And they used to put kind of the toxic version in the salt, but at least they knew that you needed that. When you don't have it, the fluoride comes in. So this is about the battle against fluoride more than anything. So this is a short segment. We really appreciate him coming on. Long segment coming up. But how did you begin to really discover how important iodine was, doctor? Because you've now become quite famous, and a lot of other medical doctors and others listen to you. You talk about what it does with arthritis uh, and so many other uh, issues. Uh, and, and, and so many things that the establishment really doesn't want people to know about. So thank you for coming on and tell us about your awakening and some of the things that, uh, that you've discovered, because then I see all these mainstream studies and stuff out there too, backing up what you're saying. Well, thank you for having me on, Alex. And, uh, I, I didn't quite know I was old enough to be a granddaddy. Um, but, uh, I started looking at patients, uh, holistically about 20 years ago after treating my father who was my first holistically treated patients, and I found that my father, who had a 25-year history of heart disease and continual angina and seeing all the best doctors out there was on 10 different medications, when I looked at him holistically, he had an unrecognized thyroid problem, and when I just got his thyroid working better, you know, his 25-year history of angina went away, he, he felt better, he looked better and acted better, and I started looking at every patient from that moment on for hormonal and thyroid problems. And ultimately, I came to find so many patients with thyroid problems. I started searching for an underlying cause of why are so many patients having thyroid problems. And about 12 years ago, I came to that, uh, I did mean, a study of iodine. And when I started looking at my patients and their iodine levels, I found that over 95% were significantly lower, low in iodine. And when I started uh, rectifying this with Using the right kind of iodine, these patients started to get better from a variety of problems, including thyroid problems and breast problems and ovarian, uterine, prostate problems, and we'll get into all that discussion. But that, that's how I started, and, you know, now I've been treating people with iodine for, you know, over a dozen years and seeing the great results with it. Now, obviously the power structure knew about this. Why do you think they've actually tried to keep iodine out of things? You know, that's a very interesting question, and the power structure did know about this, and that's why they added salt in the 1920s to prevent the goiter epidemic that was occurring. And the, the interesting thing was after they, you know, the, the, the iodization of salt was hailed as one of the first public health miracles in the United States government, and it was. It, it really effectively treated a problem that was, a, that was a, you know, occurring at epidemic rates. It treated it cheaply. It treated it safely. Um, the, the interest for iodine waned after that because iodine is not a patentable substance and big pharma started to make inroads after World War II and really they were only interested in patentable substances and the, the, the powers that be thought that the coiter epidemic was cured with the iodization of salt, which just wasn't the case. And then it, things got worse in the 1970s. The when radioactive iodine began to be used in medicine, radioactive iodine would only work if people were iodine deficient. It doesn't work if the iodine receptors are saturated with iodine because the radioactive iodine just passes through and doesn't bind anything. So the powers that be mandated that the flour products have iodine removed from them, which used to be in all the flour products, and put bromine in them, which is a uh, toxic halogen and it's a competitive inhibitor of iodine. And it, that's what really started driving the iodine epidemic we're seeing, you know, uh, 40 years later now. And 
um, that's why I think we're seeing so many more thyroid problems and breast problems and so on and so on. DrBrownstein.com, invaluable site with videos and audio and all the big studies out there. The reason we're really harping on this, folks, is I'm trying to bring you solutions. And this is one of the biggest, and it's right there in the gourmet salts and things like that, and even better with things like uh, the product that you know, we've developed with Dr. Group, obviously, but others that are out there as well. This is something that people need to know about. That's why we developed Survival Shield. We'll be right back. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. We have a medical doctor here, Dr. David Brownstein. Been doing all my research on what is the best types of iodine. My research just continually comes back to him. He's the big granddaddy of it. But it turns out he just rediscovered all the stuff that was already known that I guess big pharma and folks don't want you to know. So that I guess you're six, you got to go to them. Uh, but he also covers vitamin B12 and so much more. Great looking website too. Uh, but look, I didn't get him on. But in fact, Months ago, I wanted to get him on. It's taken that long to get him. Survival Shield from InfoWars Life. Yes, we sell it. It's the best nascent iodine out there, according to all the experts I've talked to. It's what I take, and I've been taking it two months. I started taking this. I was like, my gosh, I've got to private label this and put it out. I've sold so much of it. It's all sold out. They're making more. It'll be here in two weeks. You can pre-order at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. But the issue is it's amazing. And the, what it does for my brain clarity, you name it, everything that Dr. Brownstein talked about and that I read about and I saw in his videos, I guess even six months ago when I was piddling around trying to become informed, is, is, is really been accurate from my own personal experience. So, sir, you're here. You've been holding. You've got the floor. Give us the medical studies, what's going on, what's happening, and just why you say that along with vitamin B12, vitamin C and things, uh, you know, together with the iodine and the proper type of iodine, it's just really, from my perspective, the holy grail. You know, Alex, out of all the things that I've seen over 20 years of practicing holistic medicine, iodine is gives the biggest bang for the buck. Iodine is an essential new element for our body. If we don't have enough iodine, we won't live. It's concentrated in the glandular tissue of the body. And iodine's main job in the glandular tissue is to maintain the normal architecture of the glands. When I say the glandular tissue, I refer to the breast, the ovaries, uterus, thyroid, prostate. What are we having problems with in our country right now? Glandular problems. We have one in seven women, women with breast cancer, one in three men with prostate cancer. We have epidemic increases of ovarian and uterine problems. And certainly we have epidemic increases of all the thyroid problems, autoimmune thyroid illnesses such as Hashimoto's and Graves disease, hypothyroidism and thyroid cancer. What's the relationship between all these diseases that are increasing in epidemic rates? I say the relationship is iodine deficiency. Over the last 40 years, our iodine levels have fallen over 50%, according to the US government's own studies. During that same time, we've seen rapid increases in all those illnesses I just mentioned. And I say that we're not gonna get to the underlying cause of these problems with more mammograms and more PSA tests. We're gonna get to the underlying cause when we start asking the right questions. Why are so many people suffering with thyroid breast and prostate and ovarian and uterine problems. And I say it's nutritional and hormonal imbalances. And one big piece of this puzzle for all this stuff is iodine deficiency. Now, Doc, again, by the third hour, I get wound up. Uh, and so I'll interrupt you if you stop. I'm going to give you the floor to really roll mm -hmm. and give everybody a presentation because you're a hard guy to get on. You're the you're the grand poobah, the uh, head honcho of the resurgence of uh, the healthy types of iodine. So I want you to roll through the studies, everything. You've got the floor. All right, I'll take grand poobah over granddaddy. So that, that'll take. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I've, I've been looking at patients for 20 years and trying to help them achieve their optimal health. And I can assure you it's impossible to achieve your optimal health if you don't have a properly balanced hormonal system. And I can assure you it's impossible to have a properly balanced hormonal system if you don't have enough iodine. Iodine is concentrated in all the glands of the body, and that includes the thyroid and the adrenals and the ovaries and the uterus. And I'm repeating myself with these, but it's important because so many people are suffering from these glandular problems. And most people don't know that if you don't have adequate amounts of iodine, you can't make any hormone in the body. That not only includes the thyroid, that includes the adrenal hormones. And a lot is written about low adrenal problems and people need adrenal support and the adrenal glands are your fight or flight glands and you need proper adrenal hormones to feel good and to be able to exercise and to be able to just function daily. Well, I can tell you, I see a lot of people with adrenal and thyroid problems and they can't get their balance if they don't have enough iodine. Now, the government fortified salt with iodine in the 1920s after recognizing the goiter epidemic that was affecting the United States. And that little bit of iodine and iodized salt, it's about 75 micrograms per gram, was enough to prevent goiter in the vast majority of people that ate iodized salt. However, what's happened in the recent years is our exposure to toxic chemicals that pull iodine out of the body has, has increased rapidly. And two of these toxic halogens are fluoride and bromide. And we get bromide. I found that uh, bromide toxicity occurring in every single one of a thousand patients that I've tested for the bromide levels. And in fact, I stopped checking people for bromide toxicity just because I thought I was wasting their money because everyone's high in bromide. We, we are exposed from bromide from multiple sources, from simple things like if you're in a pool or a hot tub that has brominate, where they're using bromine to uh, keep the water clean, there's one exposure. But we're getting bromide in our food from uh, bakery products because the government allows flour to be brominated instead of iodinated. Um, so the breads and pastas and cereals uh, made with regular flour are, are, have bromine in them. We also get bromine in drink, such as Mountain Dew and other soft drinks. Um, and we get bromine in a lot of medical uh, prescription items, such as uh, inhalers for asthma and, and other prescription items where there's a bromine atom in the center of the uh, drug. The, the next most common halogen that is causing problems with our iodine levels is fluoride. And we all know that our water supply is fluoridated, even though there are no good studies that show the fluoridation of our water supply decreases cavity rates, which is why they did it in the 1950s. Um, what's not known by most people is that almost every single European country that used to fluoridate the water has stopped because they've realized that fluoride in the water is more dangerous than it is helpful. And they've also realized that there's no difference between cavity rate in fluoridated versus unfluoridated countries. Um, we also get fluoride in, in juices and, and any canned food source where they're getting it from a public water supply and using that water as part of the canned juices. Um, it's in baby food and we have become an over fluoridated country. And the, the, this double whammy of fluoride and bromide has really pushed the iodine levels down in our body and, and made us worse. And the consequences of this are this epidemic of breast cancer, fibrocystic breast disease, thyroid cancer, autoimmune thyroid illness, hypothyroidism, and prostate cancer that we're seeing. And I firmly believe that we're not gonna get to the underlying cause of these problems by ordering more tests, um, uh, such as mammograms or PSAs or or, and it's, these diseases are certainly not occurring because we have a deficiency of surgery or chemotherapy or radiation out there. It's occurring because we have nutritional and hormonal imbalances. And one of the biggest nutritional imbalance is iodine deficiency. I've tested over 6,000 patients. Well, my, between my partners and I, we've tested over 6,000 patients. We found over 96%, our numbers right now are 96.4% of these 6,000 patients are deficient in iodine. These are huge numbers. The majority of those 96% are not just mildly deficient in iodine, they're severely deficient in iodine. So if iodine is supposed to maintain the normal architecture of the glandular tissue, you can, just, you can just think about what's happening to these 96% of patients who have low iodine levels. You can think about what's happening in their thyroid, their prostate, their ovaries, their uterus, and, and you, you can gather that there's gonna be illness in those tissues. And until that is being uh, identified, by the powers that be, we're just going to keep rolling down the same pathway of spending too much money on diagnostic tests, too much money on therapies that don't treat the underlying cause of the illness, and we're not getting to what's causing 
the underlying cause of many of these illnesses. And we need to really revamp our approach. And our approach should be to search for underlying causes and nutritional and hormonal imbalances, and to really search for what's throwing off the biochemistry of the body that's allowing these diseases to develop. And really when this search begins, things like I, there's more than just iodine out there. And, and I don't feel that iodine should be used solely without, without it being used as part of a holistic treatment approach. So yes, iodine can help all these conditions, but remember if the listener decides that they're gonna take iodine just from hearing me talk, you're gonna displace these fluoride and bromide atoms that are all through your body and your body has to get rid of those, mostly through your kidneys and through the urine. And if you don't have the proper nutritional support, you can cause some problems with taking iodine. So iodine should be used as part of I was of about to say, I was about to say, I've been on it two months now, greater mental clarity, lost a lot of weight, uh, had incredible energy. It's like a drug, but two months into it now, I am detoxing big time. I mean, big time. It is really cleaning me out. And I was talking to Dr. Group. He was saying there's a lot of other stuff. What is it? What's the other key? Is it magnesium you're supposed to take with it? What's all the other stuff? Well, the biggest thing that you could take to prevent the detox reactions from iodine is salt, unrefined salt. So in the old days when people got bromide toxic because the medical establishment used to give people bromine because it, it dulls the brain. So if people were, were uh, having mental issues, they would give them just bromine to just, just chill them out. Well, Isn't that the same table as, as basically fluoride? That's why we know the communists and the Nazis put it in the water. I mean, this is history. And, and so they put something in there to calm us. It's also very toxic. It's the same halide group 17 of the periodic table, fluoride, bromide, iodine, and chlorine. And that's why the Nazis use these halides. They use both bromine and fluoride to calm down their populations and to keep them down. But it was also, I mean, I mean, you have the knowledge for folks who don't know. Uh, at the drugstores, they said, if your kid's throwing fits or having problems, here's this as well. I mean, this was this was across the board, and now they just do it to all of us. So in in the old days, when they gave too much bromine, what, how'd they get the bromine out? They used to salt it out. So they would give people sodium chloride IVs and oral salt tablets. Well, we, we don't have to use uh, so, uh, IVs of sodium and chloride to do this. All you have to do, if you're going to take iodine, the biggest thing I can encourage the listeners to do is to increase their intake of unrefined salt. And unrefined salt has over 80 minerals in it. When you compare that to refined salt, which has zero minerals in it, it doesn't take a medical degree to decide. And again, here's what's incredible. Body. You're an articulate smart guy that's been repopularizing this, God bless you. But I mean, I've just read average amount of history and this is all over the place. They knew what to do with goiters in the 20s. They knew what to do in Africa in the 30s with all the folks that weren't getting iodine. They know now, I mean, the average doctor is just unconscious because the medical model doesn't make money if it's non-patentable. And the drug companies, big pharma are driving the bus on medicine. And so there's no nutrition taught. There's no basic stuff taught. And that's why I'm not just here selling our off the chart survival shield old nascent iodine from Dr. Group that I've seen it all, I think, amongst the best out there. I'm telling folks, get the gourmet salts that have all the minerals in it. Uh, you know, just at least do these basics for you and your family. Filter your water, get the gourmet salts, um, you know, get like the Survival Shield or other high, super high quality nascent iodines that are pure and don't need to be broken down. Um, what are the other things? I mean, I've told it's vitamin C, it's the B vitamins, it's the, uh, what are the other minerals and things that you're really supposed to take? Because uh, I'm forgetting from a few days ago in my research. Uh, your, 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 your memory's not too bad. Uh, the, the other things that help to prevent problems when taking iodine, number one is salt. Number two is drink enough water. You want to maintain hydration. Number three is vitamin C. Vitamin C acts like a strong antioxidant. Um, and, you know, a couple thousand milligrams of vitamin C goes a long way in this case. Uh, B vitamins are very helpful, particularly vitamins B2 and B3, but a good B complex could be helpful for this. And a major thing is magnesium. Magnesium can counter the problems that happen in the thyroid and the breast and the ovaries with too much iodine as, as oxidative stress builds up. And taking, you know, 100 to 400 milligrams of magnesium per what day. What about selenium? Because I've been told by a lot of folks that's key to also take along with the iodine. There's numerous studies that show that selenium can help autoimmune thyroid disorders. Selenium, selenium acts as an antioxidant. Selenium can be can be a part of this plan and and very much help prevent toxic reactions from iodine. And let me let me let me clarify that. I don't see too many toxic reactions from iodine. 
Um, most people, if they just do the basics, you know, hydration, salts, magnesium, vitamin C, and a little B vitamin support, they won't get any problems when taking iodine. But the system tells us don't get salt, don't have any fat, but all the studies I see, like I have an uncle who was in a motorcycle wreck, and they told him, and he quit having as many seizures 20-something years ago, start having a, you know, a, a proper fat diet, not trans fat, but like coconut fats and others, but also the fat that's in beef. And that almost knocked out most of his uh, seizures right there. I mean, they know that. So they're saying no fat, no salt. I mean, this is a recipe to have a bunch of invalids. You got that right. Well, we've, we've, we've followed the government recommendation, recommendations over the years. We've lowered our salt intake. We've lowered our fat intake. And what's it gotten us? It's gotten us the heaviest country on the face of the earth. It's gotten us more heart disease than we know what to do with. It's gotten us more cancer than we know what to do with. They're all wrong. That's why I've written all these books on diet and I've written a book on salt. Because I find that these things, when they're done properly and done with the right kinds of salt and the right kinds of fat, have tremendously positive effects on people. Doctor, what's the best salt? I mean, I know you don't have stock in these companies, but of all the hundreds of gourmet salts, what do you want? Just a wide spectrum Himalayan or what do you want? I have no stock in any of these companies that I'm going to mention. So I've tested three brands of unrefined salt and, uh, a few times each. And I've tested them for their toxicity levels. I've tested Himalayan salt, Celtic brands uh, salt, and Redmond sea salt. All three salts have tested clean with a good mineral content with no toxicity. Um, out of those three, I think they're all very adequate for what I'm talking about. I don't see a big difference between the Hold three. Hold on, tell us the best though when we come back, because I want to know. Many anthropologists and archeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Many anthropologists Dollar fades on Fed worries. Why does a private bank run our whole life? Shows how captured we are. But at least the average American now knows the Federal Reserve is private. That's half the battle. This 100-year anniversary is coming up the 23rd. China may step in and push for alternative currency. Yeah, push for the globalists that want to move us to the SDR. And the debt is threatening Christmas. But there is no debt. Obama said that there's no such thing as a debt increase. I mean, increasing the debt doesn't increase the debt. We're joined by Dr. David Brownstein, and he is a medical doctor, one of the leading experts on what thyroid does, but doing the research, there is just so much information on this everywhere. In the five minutes we've got left, sir, I'm going to do a little bit of overdrive for listeners about the Second Amendment march in San Antonio at the Alamo tomorrow, so folks stay with us for that. Other points people need to know about this. I mean, uh, well, finish up with testing those salts, which one was best. Uh, but bottom line, you're talking, go to the store, five bucks, get a big thing of this, put it on your kid's food. There it is right there. I don't own any stock in it either. I just want the healthcare system not to go bankrupt and to not have all these people sick. I mean, hyperthyroidism in women is epidemic in the statistics, but everywhere I go, I see middle-aged women with swollen throats. No one's telling them that they've even got iodine deficiency. You're, you're right on the money. It's, it, it is occurring at epidemic rates. And um, you, women should know, well, women, women and men should know, you can't get an autoimmune thyroid disorder unless you're iodine deficient. Um, unfortunately, conventional medicine is under the myth that iodine causes these illnesses. Well, if iodine were causing these illnesses, we'd see them declining over the last 40 years as our iodine levels have fallen over 50%. What's happened over the last 40 years? Autoimmune thyroid illnesses have increased in epidemic rates, all of them. Uh, from Hashimoto's to Graves' disease, and that, and then we throw in thyroid cancer, all increasing why these iodine levels are falling. It's it's pretty clear what's causing this, and you know a big piece of this puzzle is iodine deficiency. 
And their answer is have even less salt. In fact, I've been seeing some of the new guidelines. Uh, they're, they're saying you don't really need any of it. I mean, next they'll say you don't need water. You know, you know Alex, uh, I wrote my book, Salt Your Way to Health, because a, a nutritionist wrote an article in the paper. She was asked a question. Does anyone need, is there any difference between refined salt and unrefined salt? And she said, no, there's no difference. They're equally high in sodium and need to be avoided. And that article irritated me enough. I decided to write my book about it. And when I lecture about salt, I always give her credit because, um, you know, I show the article that she wrote and thank her for it because it irritated me enough to write that book. But salt's the second major constituent in our body next to water. We need proper hydration. We need proper salt. And we need adequate iodine levels. And I think those are doing the basics in people. And I, I say that you can't achieve your optimal health unless you have hydration, unless you have enough salt, and unless you have enough iodine. Those are just the basic things. Well, I mean, I know do. this. I, I can eat some salty food when I'm exhausted and suddenly have a ton of energy. When I used to work for a summer on a golf course, uh, you know, the folks after work that did that professionally, they'd say, hey, take some of this, and I'd bang back some of that flavored salt. Even though it was crud salt that didn't have all the minerals, I would suddenly, you know, rush off of it. My body was craving it. Absolutely. Well, we crave salt because it's a necessary ingredient in our body. We shouldn't be limiting salt. There's no studies that show even limiting refined salt, which is a toxic substance, has any benefit. If you limit salt in your body, did you know, Alex, that your increase of, you have a rapid increase in heart attacks, you have a rapid increase in cholesterol levels and LDL cholesterol levels? Oh, I know. Look at heart disease goes insulin. way up when they get rid of the salt. When the heart is the most electrochemical part of the body next to the brain, it's got to have it. They're running out of salt. You, well, you know better than I. All the studies, the marathon guys that drop dead and they go study, they ran out of salt. They keep they keep our they want us to keep our salt levels low, I believe, because it causes so many problems in the body from insulin problems to lipid problems to obesity problems and heart problems. We have all these drugs to take for these problems. That's why they want us to keep us low in this. But people are smarter than that. And doctors should be smarter than that because doctors study biochemistry. And if you study biochemistry, you can realize very quickly that it's probably best not to use drugs that poison enzymes and wow. block receptors. It's best to use natural things that support the body's biochemistry, like salt and iodine. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. Well, I began to discuss with my wife protecting myself, her, and of course our children. Most importantly, I have three small children, ages 10, 9, and 5. Radiation really affects children more than adults because they have fast-growing cells. All the literature is clear on that. And I went and talked to medical doctors, scientists, nuclear physicists, nutritionists, and I said, what's the number one thing I can do to protect my family? And they said, Alex, it's leave the northern hemisphere. Go south of the equator. That's where the radiation levels are very, very low. If you look at the wind patterns, the north hardly interacts with the south. And it's unfortunate that we've done this to our planet. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. 
Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. And it's the good iodine, the nascent iodine, that is able to block that and just do so many things uh, for your body and your health. I've been taking it. It's amazing. It's a lot better than coffee, I'm here to tell you. And that's why we are now offering our own nascent iodine that's double the strength, made in the best laboratory that is uh, FDA uh, certified and accredited. And it is double strength at half the price of the leading competitor. You know my rule, bring you the highest quality products at the lowest prices we can, so it's a win-win-win. I believe in you reap what you sow. So not only do we get the best deal on nascent iodine at InfoWarsLife.com for your general health and also for any type of emergencies or disasters, you will also be getting a great deal and supporting the InfoWar and our news operation, promoting the cure for tyranny, the First Amendment, promoting liberty and a rediscovery of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and true Americana that's made this nation so great. So please join me in being among the first to visit InfoWarsLife.com. We've got discounts if you buy the nascent iodine in bulk. I challenge you to try to find a better deal. We have the best deal out there and the best quality. In closing, here is probably the most important point. You don't just take nascent iodine when disaster strikes, when there's some new giant disaster. The Northern Hemisphere is already double what it was 60 years ago with the radioactive background. I believe from the research I've done and the experts I've talked to, it is key to take nascent iodine to protect your thyroid from the radiological disaster that's already happened and unfortunately future disasters that will happen. That's why it's important to fill your thyroid up now with the healthy nascent iodine so that the sodium fluoride, the radioactive isotopes and the rest of it can't get in. That's the key. This is something that across the board has been shown in study after study to be an absolutely essential nutrient in the body. Until a few decades ago, the government put it in the salt because they knew you needed it. But then they took that out that's good for the thyroid and put the sodium fluoride in that's bad for it. Talk about eugenics, talk about soft kill, talk about an invisible weapon in the water supply. This stuff is on record as a detoxifier for the fluoride they're adding to our water. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. <laughs>